celebratory gala marking the 47th anniversary of Barbados independence and once again a special welcome to 
our High Commissioner, His Excellency Hugh Anthony Arthur, our distinguished guest, Councillor Griffith, and also we have in the house our Deputy High Commissioner, Mr. Donville Johnson. So we'd like to just welcome you all. My name is Jennifer Lepom and I will be your MC for tonight. Remain standing while we have the national anthem. But can you sing it please? Yet. I'm going to call on Roseanne Green, who's going to just say a, say a prayer and bless the food for us. So let's welcome Roseanne as she comes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Barbados and for the 47 years that she has celebrated. May you bless the people of Barbados the people here in the UK and all over the world. Give wisdom to all her leaders, the government, that they may rule and govern wisely. Father Lord, we remember Bokfa and the committee members. Let them make the right decisions as Bokfa learns to grow. Heavenly Father, today we remember the people of Scotland. We remember their friends and families as they grieve over the loss of their loved ones. We bless this food and the hands that have prepared it. We also remember, Lord, those friends and family who can't be here with us for one reason or another or who have passed. I ask you, Lord, to, as we enjoy the event, to help us, and as we leave this place, take us home safely and protect us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Roseanne. You may be seated. I know you're hungry, and so we will, we will open the table, but before I do that, I'm going to call on the chair of Bokfa, Maureen Stewart, Maureen, to say a few words. Hello, can I get your attention? I don't know how many of you know, but Bokfa is all... Can we have some silence, please? Silence, please. We're going to work together tonight, aren't we? So when, when we're saying things up here and people are up here, I'm going to ask that you just pay attention. We're going to just honour each other tonight. Can I get a yes? yes. All right, good. So I just want to tell you quickly that Bokfa is also 47 years old because Bokfa was started to mark the independence. So I think it's quite fitting um, that, you know, there is the celebration and that Bokfa is here carrying on the mantle, if you like. So I'm going to hand you over to Maureen, the chair, just to say a little bit about the, the association. Good evening, His Excellency, High Commissioner for Barbados to the UK, 
Mr. Hugh Anthony Arthur, Deputy High Commissioner Don Bill Johnson, Eddie Griffiths, Councillor. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. As Chair of Bakfa, my name is Maureen Stewart, and I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome you all here this evening. And first of all, let me apologize for the time it has taken to um, get you all seated. And I know you're going to, um, you're all hungry because I am. So this is going to be short and I hope sweet. And I just want to say there are many new faces here. And I hope that um, this evening's event is going to be a start of a long standing relationship between the new faces that I see in Monk Story Gas and Bokfa. Because Bokfa, as um, the MC said, is very much a growing um, organization. And we're always looking to welcome um, new members, supporters, and of course, we see you all as friends as you're here tonight. So welcome. I hope you enjoy the meal. And without much further ado, I will um, see you all later. Okay, so enjoy. Thank you. Okay, you'll be glad to know that the table now is open for dinner, and so I'm going to call the High Commissioner's table first to turn a horn. Do you realise that all the names, I mean, for our, who, who are not Barbadians today? Who is Barbadians friends? Let me just see a hand of um, the friends of Barbados tonight. Okay, so you'll see that all the tables are named with places in Barbados. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to call the High Commissioner's table first, turn a horn um, to open the the dinner and um, so if you'd like to to go first and then when Welch the Hall second where's Welch the Hall that's our that's our deputy HC's table to the podium to deliver the Prime Minister's speech. Can you join me in welcoming him? His Excellency Hugh Arthur. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really wonderful to see so many Barbadians coming together, literally so closely, to celebrate the anniversary of independence, and I congratulate Buck for achieving that. I trust you all have been having a wonderful independence anniversary, and that you will continue to enjoy the rest of the evening. It is now my great honor to present the Prime Minister's message to the diaspora community. Message by the Honorable Friend of Stuart, QCMP, Prime Minister of Barbados, on the 47th anniversary of independence. My fellow Barbadians, the 47th anniversary of independence is an occasion to pause and reflect on the significant contribution of our nation builders 
who ended a colonial relationship with Great Britain, which lasted for several centuries. Barbadians old enough to recall our historic journey to independence would appreciate how our hearts swelled with pride, even though privately we shared anxieties of an uncertain future. In 1966, our focus was on building a new nation state and overcoming the challenges and threats a global economy would present. Over time, Barbadians have drawn upon the unfailing hand of Almighty God and the leadership of successive governments to strengthen the country's institutions and create pathways for the progress of our people. Today, Barbadians continue to be optimistic about the future, even though our challenges now revolve around improving our social and health services for an aging population, managing development of the island's infrastructure, coping with climate change, promoting sustainable development, and overcoming one of the most brutal economic downturns Barbados and the world have ever experienced. To achieve these objectives, Barbados will require its chief stakeholders, the government, the private sector, the trade unions, civil society, citizens and friends of Barbados to work in partnership. This collaboration cannot exclude the contributions of Barbados's diaspora and its core of honorary consuls overseas. Barbadians abroad play a vital, pivotal role in broadening the scope of the country's international outreach. Your extensive contributions and resources afford a developing country like Barbados with a small open economy, access to an extensive network in places far removed from the limited boundaries of our 166 square miles. The government and people of Barbados attach the highest importance to strengthening this relationship, and this government has done so in very tangible ways. Many Barbadians are aware of the duty-free concessions government provides to our brothers and sisters returning home on resettlement. Over the years, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade has administered the reintegration program, and efforts are ongoing to improve the range of services now offered to Barbados networkers, as we now call them. I would add that with policy revisions implemented in 2010, a new wave of interest has developed among younger Barbadians to resettle and to invest in the country. The government is committed to providing an enabling environment, including attractive incentive packages to spur home-based investment and entrepreneurship. Such gestures should provide the foundation for building a closer, stronger union with Barbadians at home and overseas. In addition, the Cabinet has agreed to introduce a new facility to Barbados networkers on return to Barbados, to purchase a vehicle free of duty locally once they have clearly established that they are using their own foreign exchange for the purpose. This initiative is designed to minimize some of the challenges experienced by networkers with the importation of vehicles. Currently, a system of implementation is being undertaken before the program is unveiled in 2014. The year 2014 is also a significant year for the Barbados diaspora, particularly those in Panama. Next year will mark the centennial anniversary of the Barbados-Panama migration and will highlight the contribution of Barbadians who assisted in the construction of the Panama Canal. Their descendants have sought to be officially recognized as members of the Barbados diaspora. The government has responded to this appeal and is working assiduously to bring this to fruition. Greater focus will also be paid to how 
the 2014 Barbados Network Consultation Conference to be held in Barbados could be enhanced to meet the needs of the diaspora community. It is through these efforts of cultural exchange, economic mobilization, and outreach that the government and people of Barbados will achieve economic sustainability and prosperity. As government strives to strengthen the nation's economy, we call upon every Barbadian to reflect on the legacy we have been bequeathed by our nation builders. Our inheritance is a spirit of resilience, of overcoming adversity, and being triumphant. In this independence season, let us all recommit ourselves to reinforcing the values that have strengthened and sustained our nation for these 47 years, the values of pride and industry. Let us all, by our actions, and in our respective cities, associations, and communities, work towards reflecting the pride of nation. I take this opportunity to extend a happy independence to all Barbadians on this 47th milestone in the growth of our nation. God bless you all. From the gesture, Prime Minister. I thank you. Thank you, High Commissioner. Can we see who are not Barbadians in the house again? Okay. Do you want to know a little bit about Barbados? Have you got a minute? I found out some facts. Can I share them with you all? Huh? Does anyone want to know some things about Barbados quickly? Show the hands. Who's for yes? All right. All right. So, everyone knows. So, can I tell you a little story then, quickly, before we start? Just a little story, quickly. So, I'm in this lift, yeah, with a little old lady. And in walks a posh looking woman, smelling really sweet. And so she came in and her nose was in the ear, didn't speak. And so the little old lady said, what are you wearing? And she said, oh, Giorgio, um, New York, $160 an ounce. Nothing more said. So we went up, we're in the escalator, so we're going up. In walk another lady now, again with some attitude and said, nothing. So my little old lady next to her said, oh, you smell sweet. So by this time, the whole escalator smelling really sweet. So she said, oh, what are you wearing? She said, Chanel number no. five, $200 an ounce. So we've gone up now, my little old lady's getting ready to leave. And the smell changed. This time, the aroma drowned the sweet smell, and we start to cough, and she stepped out and said, breadfruit? Which <laughs> town? 36 cents a pound. <laughs> so we're going to go on with the program. So we're going to go back to Danny Vince. I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> I know, it made me laugh too. Outside is a comment book. I know we had some issues with the queuing and the dinner. But but for we really like to just get your feedback about how the evening's going, any improvements, just generally, just, just support them in terms of, of feeding back. So it's by the ticket desk, so if you get a minute, just fill in the box and um, fill in the, 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 the slip and let them know what you're, what you're thinking, okay? And I'll be back to say a little bit more, but for now, back to the yeah. <laughs>
Rihanna's views as to whether or not Rihanna is a suitable icon to bring additional revenue into tourism. I would like to get a panel's view whether or not that is the view on that. And if it is a Rihanna, each of you can give your idea of what that icon should be. <laughs> can, um, can I change it? I think we're actually here to on a fundamental thing. Rihanna is not an icon, she is a global business. And if you look at Rihanna, she has actually created more wealth for herself, she's created more jobs for many people, and she's actually already beginning to bring um, money into the Barbadian economy over a very short period of time in a way which is amazing. If if you if Rihanna was a publicly traded company, but if you can allow me to, to use that <laughs> language, she would you'd have found that she has created more wealth than the cave shepherds that have been around for 150 years or whatever. And that is remarkable. This is a young black Barbadian woman who in less than a decade has created more wealth than country than companies in Barbados that have been around for 150 years on the back of her talent. She should be celebrated and, and she's more than an icon. She's a businesswoman and a global enterprise. Just to um, echo what Alan has said, you know, the reality is that, you know, for us, Rihanna is a one-off. And I think every Bajan should be proud that she is Bajan. I think in a business where, you know, we spent annually 180 million um, pounds just to get our brand on TV, I would suspect that Rihanna's association with, association with Barbados has generated so much free marketing for Barbados that is way beyond any tangible uh, role she plays in the context of an ambassador. So for me, I think everybody that knows Rihanna knows she's from Barbados. And the fact, and the fact that they know that puts Barbados in a spotlight that if they had to pay for that free advertising, they couldn't afford it. So I think she, we should be grateful that she is of Asia. And the fact that in most things that she, that she does, doesn't overtly embarrass the country or embarrass herself. You know, she's a young lady, she's successful. You know, she has to enjoy her life, but she's also, to me, you know, a resource for Barbados that we should really appreciate and treasure. Okay. Thank you. My disappointment, my disappointment with how Barbadians view Rihanna is that we see her in one dimension only. Rihanna, Miss Fenty, should be the poster girl, child, woman, sorry, for business, the business brand of Barbados. We are well known already for sun, sea, and sand, and enjoyment, and now other things because of Rihanna. But what we fail to recognize is that the very fact that she is still where she is after almost, it's almost 10 years, means that she's an astute businesswoman. And what we need for our people, perhaps not too many more examples of artists, we've got many of them, some of them made them interna were international, some perhaps not. She is the only business person in this century that we can say we can learn from her, we can use her to build our business brand. The tourism brand is sorted. I think she's just amplifying it. But what she represents to me is someone who is a business person who is astute and who can carry the flag for the business brand of Barbados. And we have not recognized that so far. Thank you.